Okay, today we're going to take a look at cross sections of solids. Okay, you probably need to write at least this part down. Uh, cross sections deal with taking uh, solids, uh, my grammar's bad there. Okay, taking a solid, cutting it into two pieces, and examining the shape of the surface that was created by the cut. Now, while you're scribbling that down and thinking about it, it would, it seems like a reasonable thing to assume that when you cut a solid open, what you'll end up with is a shape that is either identical or very close to identical to one of the faces of the solid that you just cut. <clears throat> Unfortunately, that's not necessarily true. As long as we cut a solid open, as long as we cross-sect it parallel to one of the sides, a lot of times we do end up with a shape that is either congruent or similar to the side that it's parallel to. But what you're going to see and where you're going to, where the problems are going to arise is when we cut through a solid in a manner that's not parallel to one of the sides. What you're going to see is we, we end up generating all kinds of strange shapes and it is those strange shapes that, that have me concerned about the way that they might ask these questions. Okay, but anyway, here's kind of step by step of, of what you would be looking at on just any cross section. You're going to start off with a solid, okay, in this case we got Mr. Cylinder sitting over here on the left. The solid is then going to be cut in some manner, okay, sliced completely through. Okay, so pardon my bad graphics, I got a little sword in there, cut it open. Okay, when the cut happens, the solid is then broken into two pieces. Okay, I don't want to say two equal pieces or two congruent pieces because certainly they are not equal and they are not congruent in a lot of cases. And you may not be able to write this down and that's fine. We're going to get some pretty ugly looking diagrams here in a minute. And you probably won't be able to, to follow along with it, but at least get the, get the vocabulary, the language here. Okay, so our solid is cut into pieces. From then, what we do is we take one of the pieces, okay, and kind of have a look at the, the surface, the new surface that is cut open. And it is the shape and the size of those surfaces that is under examination here. Okay. And I don't think that this is a mystery, this little cross section that I've got on the board right now, this isn't a mystery to anybody. I think if you said, okay, anybody, all right, you take a tin can, a Coke can or whatever, cut it straight across through the middle, and then open it up and have a look at it. What kind of a shape did you generate by cutting it open? Well, I think everybody here would know, oh, it's a circle. Okay, that's, that's not a big mystery. Okay, the, the mystery starts to arise, the questions start to arise, and the troubles start to show up when we don't cut something straight across or straight through or something like that. For example, the exact same cylinder, the exact same Coke can, if that's the way you want to think of it, if you were to cut it across the middle but not parallel to the base, well, we don't end up with a circular cut anymore. Okay, we end up with an oval-shaped cup and uh, cut. And if you're not familiar with the the correct term for oval, it is ellipse. And you'll spend more time working with ellipses uh, when you get into algebra two. Okay, <clears throat> but I think you can probably see. I mean, on that coke can, as long as you cut it straight across, you end up with a nice circular uh, cross section. But when you take that coke can and cut through it at an angle. Well, you still have that, like on this diagram, you still have that front to back measurement that's still the same, okay? It's the diameter of the base and the diameter of this bottom cross section is still the exact same. But what about this cut that was from the left side to the right side? Well, when the cut got si a little diagonal on us, it took a longer cut to get through the solid, to get all the way through it, because we didn't just go, get straight across it. It was it had the, the knife had to travel a longer way through it, and that caused that circular cut to expand in one of its one of its axes, one of its directions, however you want to put it. And that's how come the cut is no longer circular. It's more elliptical than it was. Okay. But what you're going to see and what the challenge of the lesson today is there's a lot of different ways this thing could be cut. And since there's so many different ways the thing could be cut, what kind of shapes 
are are possible. Okay. Well, can anybody think of another way to cut this cylinder other than like we just did, straight across it, straight through it, or at an angle? Okay. What happens if we went straight down through it? Okay. Yeah. What kind of a shape would you generate on a cross section of that if you cut the Coke can straight down the middle? Yeah. You'd end up with a rectangle in that particular case, just by the nature of the way that the thing is cut. Okay. But if your imagination is not starting to run away with you yet, start letting it a little bit. Imagine what would happen if you didn't cut the thing all the way through. Like in these, these two previous cases, we went straight through the lateral face. Okay. On the second case, we went through the lateral face, started in the lateral face, came out of the lateral face, did it at an angle, but still started at the lateral face, came out of the lateral face. What happens... If you were to cut through it on some type of a line like that, where the, the, the slice actually begins in a lateral face, but exits through a base instead. Okay, well, what, what on earth would the cut look like then? Well, what you got to think about is, well, let's see what would actually happen. Now, obviously, if we cut through, when we get down to the base, it would cut out of both sides of the base, right? And connecting those two locations would be a straight line. So what would the cross section look like at the bottom? Well, we'd have a straight line. What would the top edge of the cut look like? Yeah, we'd have a curve, wouldn't we? Because as it enters in the, the top part of this lateral face, okay, it begins in one spot, but then the cut travels both directions around the lateral face on its way down the side. So while it starts in one spot, those two spots spread apart, travel around the outside. So you end up with kind of a cut that travels one way to get to one side, goes the other direction, coming down to the other side, and you end up with a shape that does kind of like that. And like Josue said, it's curved. Does anybody know the right term for that? It's an algebra one term. Parabola, okay, you end up with something very similar to a parabola on the other end. And, I mean, if you get, it's, it's infinite. I mean, there's so many different ways that this thing can come out. But I think what we're going to be ultimately looking at, or the things that end of course might test us on, is what type of shapes are possible. Not necessarily, hey, diagram the, the cut. What's it going to look like? Draw it. They're not going to do that, but they may say, okay, if we take a cylinder and we start doing cross sections on the cylinder, which one of the four answer choices that we provide is not a possible cross section? Okay, so they may say, you know, you might have, okay, well, we got a, a circle might be an answer choice, ellipse might be an answer choice, uh, parabola, you know, might be an answer choice, rectangle might be an answer choice, but maybe they got triangle, you know, mixed in there. And you get to thinking about, okay, what are all the different ways and directions we can cut through a, uh, a cylinder, and can I actually cause a triangle to come out of that? Well, maybe you can, maybe you can't. But that's, I think, those are the kind of questions that we're going to be looking at or be faced with when it comes down to end of course. And, of course, the more simplistic that the, the shapes are, you would think that the, the cross sections would get simpler. Well, what you're going to see is that sometimes the simpler the shape, the worse the cross sections are. Right? But uh, it just kind of depends. It's a case-by-case -case basis. Let's take a look at a cone. See if we can figure out what we can expect from different cross sections of a cone. Okay. Uh, give me a shape. What what kind of shape could we end up with from a cross section in a cone? Obviously a circle. How do you how would you cut your cone to end up with a circular cross section? Okay. Straight across the middle, something like that. Okay. Now we would still end up with a circle. It would depend on how big the circle is, depends on how close we are up to the vertex or how far we are down to the base. Okay, because obviously the, the circular base just gets smaller and smaller and smaller as it goes up until you end up with the vertex. Okay, so we get it, we get a circle, absolutely. Uh, anybody think of another shape? Get a triangle? How could we get a triangle out of that? Okay, if we slice through it vertically, okay, if we slice through it vertically, yeah, I believe you're absolutely right. If we get, we would get a triangle, even though you can't even really see the triangle, but think about if you, if you took a cone, split it exactly in half, open it up and looked at it, okay, you'd have the vertex up on top of each of the pieces, then you'd have the lateral faces, or the uh, lateral height. 
coming down each side of it. And then when you look at it from the side, what's the base look like? It's just a flat line. Okay, so it seems like we would end up with a, a nice neat triangle if we split our cone directly down the middle. Okay, what else might we end up with? Say again. An ellipse? Absolutely. We could get an ellipse just like we did with the cylinder, right? Same thing. We can cut across, but if we cut across at an angle, well, again, we're going to get a circle-ish type of a cross section. It's going to be an ellipse. Okay. Uh, what else could you do? What happens if we move that cross section or that uh, that cut that we just made? What happens if we move it to a spot where... We come through the base and the lateral face. Okay, end up with another one of those uh, you know, parabola type cross sections. Absolutely. Okay, so this is, like I say, this is kind of the challenge of cross sections is being able to have enough vision, enough imagination to see what all might be possible from chopping a three dimensional solid up into its pieces. Okay, <clears throat> now. I keep telling you that their, their, their tendencies are to ask questions about these circular, uh, the, the, the solids that have circles, like cylinders and cones. Uh, but what you're going to find out is actually the circles and cones are, are fairly uncomplicated when it comes down to cross sections, whereas something like the cube is a completely different issue altogether. Okay, cubes are very basic shape, squares on all sides. Seems like it wouldn't be much of a, much of a problem. Okay, but let's see if we can figure out what cross sections we might could end up with on a cube. Okay, what what kind of shape could you end up with? Square. Okay, have had had you? Yeah, okay, we'll come. We'll get them all here in a second. Square was the first one I heard. How would you end up with a square? Yeah, straight across, pretty much in any direction you choose, right? If you went straight across it, or straight down it, or straight through it front to back, okay, or vertically straight front to back, we'd end up with squares on all of those cross sections because it's a cube. It's square in all of its directions, okay? Uh, next one I heard was triangle. Where do we get a triangle from? If we cut diagonally, okay, let's think about it. Okay, so if I came over here and I chopped it right through there, but I get a triangle out of it. Now, there is a triangle. Anybody see where it might be? How about this? Let's come back to it here in just a second. Let me get that one out of there. <laughs> okay, uh, so I heard rectangle. Where would we go through to uh, create a rectangle? Okay, yeah, if we cut through it in a way that, um, like we got through the opposing sides, got through the top and the bottom, or the left and the right, or the front and the back, but didn't do it in a way that it was parallel to the edges that the cube has. Well, what we're going to get is we're going to get a square-ish cut, but it's going to be longer in one direction than it is in the other. So we'd end up with a rectangle. And on this cut, what we're talking about is, and I know it gets kind of hard to imagine, but we're talking about going straight back back from the position that the uh, position that the the sword is in okay so if we if we cut through the top and the bottom along those two lines we would end up with a rectangular cross section okay has anybody spotted the triangle yet okay where do you think you could get a triangular cross section Yeah, there you go. Now, see, this these guys generated a square and a rectangle because we were going through opposing sides. Left and right both got cut. To uh, front and back both got cut. Top and bottom both got cut. Now, whether they got cut parallel or not was the difference between a square and a rectangle. But what happens if we come through lateral faces and bases both at the same time? If you were to take that guy and chop that off, it would basically just cut the corner off of it. Okay, but when you take that corner and look at the cross section, it's going to have three sides as part of it. Okay, so you're going to end up with a triangular cross section. Absolutely. Uh, there's another one that's in here, and this is where things start to get pretty difficult to spot. Okay, can anybody think of another? Get these out of the way. Maybe we can see them a little better. Okay, anybody think of a different shape that might be in there to be cross sected? How about this? We ended up with a triangle because we just cut a corner off of it. 
Okay. Well, what if we pulled that same idea more instead of just cutting a corner off? What if we went out into the, the bulk of the cube, kind of cut through the body of it? Okay. But still at an angle and still at such a way that it is hitting both bases and lateral faces at the same time. Okay. Think about this one. And on this cut, I'm saying, all right, we're going to cut right there at that front edge. And, and straight back, okay, not following the angle of the solid like it is, you know, where we've got this three-dimensional projection where the solid kind of goes up and back to the right. I mean, just go straight through, okay, straight through the screen, through the wall, into the boys' restroom. So the back cut is back there on that same line as well. Yeah, what would you end up with there? Yeah, you'd end up with a, a very small cut across the front face, Okay, then it would travel, okay, travel backwards along this edge and along this edge. Okay, so we got this little bitty, little bitty line right up front. Then those two blue lines going backwards, they kind of, they're going to be going away from each other in the figure. And then at the back edge of the cut, you're going to get a, a cut that's all the way across that. And that's going to be parallel to the front edge. So as Josue said, we've got, a set of sides that are going to be parallel, another set of sides that are not going to be parallel, we end up with a trapezoid, okay? So here are actually the four different uh, shapes that we just said that we would end up with. So we did a pretty good job of coming up with those. <clears throat> okay. And uh, believe it or not, I mean, as hard as we had to think about it and kind of as many questions as I had to ask to get you to, to come up with them, these are not the hard ones there are to come up with when it comes down to a, a rectangular prism or a cube. And there's there's actually a whole lot more going on here than meets the eye, okay? And there's no way I can, I mean, this is the best I could do with this this program and the graphics I have building these, these pictures, okay? But uh, some of this stuff is more complicated than I can possibly diagram in a smart board lesson, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna kind of get away from my lesson. I'm gonna take us to a website here and I want you to follow along with the website, and let's see if we can see what else is going on inside of these cross sections. Okay, so this is the web address I'm going to, and I'll put, I'll put that address up on uh, Edmodo for anybody that's interested, and it will take you to this site. Okay, now on this site, Okay, it's a cross-section flyer site, but basically it's just an applet. It's an inter interactive window, and we can do all kinds of things to the shapes that are in there. Now, the shape that we're looking at right there is a double cone, okay, but that doesn't really mean uh, anything. Uh, we could, there's different shapes. You can see down here in this uh, rectangular box down there, there's cones, cylinders, pyramids, and prisms. Okay, and we'll get to that here in a second. But for the for the beginning part here, let me just show you this window that has your three dimensional rendering here. This is a completely interactive window. You can grab this shape, and you can rotate it around, have a look at pretty much anything that you want from pretty much any angle that you want. Okay, so there's there's a lot of information that can be seen visually inside of these figures. Now, additionally, down here, you've got these slider bars, and as you see, you can move the uh, angle and the direction of the cut. Um, you can slide the cut around uh, the particular figure. You can change the size of the uh, of the shape, and you can move the the slice throughout the uh, throughout the picture. Okay, so there's kind of a basic. Uh, crash course of what you're seeing here. And did you notice what was happening over here on the, on the right side, this two-dimensional graph? As I move all of the different things, it is showing me a two-dimensional graph of what the cross-section looks like. Okay, so as one graph moves, everything else moves in the, uh, and both of them at the same time. Okay, so let's just start here. We started off with a cylinder. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can't reset this mess to something kind of normal. Okay, we started off with a cylinder, and here's pretty much what we did. We took our cylinder, and we chopped it pretty much straight through the middle, came straight across the body of the cylinder, and as we expected, we ended up with a nice round cross-section. Okay, the next thing we did is we took that cross-section, and we came across Okay, we came through the figure a little bit, gave it a little bit of an angle coming across the lateral face. And look at what happened to your, your two-dimensional graph over here. 
Okay, it's not circular anymore. It's elliptical. Okay, and you can tell that by looking at the uh, looking at the different uh, dimensions on the on uh, the uh, the graph, the scale. Okay, and you can continue that on. Now, here's one thing that we did talk about. Okay, we talked about what happens when that slice doesn't just go through the lateral face. What happens when it starts to hit the base? Okay, and you can see there's your straight edge and there's your parabola that goes along with it. But what you're also going to see is you're going to end up with some 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 structures that are almost indescribable. Okay, and that's part of the problem with cross sections, especially at a at a low level class like geometry. How do you describe this thing? Okay, parabolas open up. Okay, their legs get wider and wider and wider, and that's what you should have learned in in algebra one. Okay, but that two dimensional graph that you have there on the right, the the legs aren't supposed to start to close back up. Okay, parabolas don't do that, which puts us in a little bit of a vocabulary issue. How do we describe that thing? We've got a flat edge. We've got a curve that's parabola-ish. Okay, but what exactly is it? And ultimately, we'd kind of end up in a, in a little bit of a tough spot. What do you call that thing? Okay, and honestly, the closest thing that we would be able to call it would be an arc. Okay, I mean, we've dealt with portions of the circumference of a circle before, and we called it an arc. Well, even though this thing is not a circle, it's still a portion of it, so probably the most accurate description we would have would be either a parabola and a straight line or an arc and a straight line. <clears throat> okay, and, you know, we took, we did the vertical, okay, Haley showed, uh, told us that we could cut it directly down the middle vertically and we'd end up with a rectangle, and you can see that, yeah, we do, we do have that. Okay, and anyway, you can, you know, it's got all kinds of different shapes, okay, that we can play around with. There's the cone and the, uh, pretty much the straight across cross section, or straight across cut that we had, and we could tilt that a little bit more, and we'd end up with our ellipse, okay. We talked about our parabola, if we were able to make the cut through the lateral uh, face as well as the base. And there is the, well, if I can, hang on, let me get the slice moved correctly. And there's your triangle from your your totally vertical cut on your cone. Okay, so it's a really cool website, you know, that uh, you, it really gives you an idea of what's going on here. And uh, here's the problem that we were just trying to work on. Okay. Okay, here's the cube that we were looking at. There's the first cut we made that straight across cross section and it came up with a square. Okay, uh, some people figured out uh, right away that if we um, Actually, if we cut across, you know, still staying parallel to two of the edges, but come across, we end up with a rectangular cross section. It's very close to being square, but not quite because of the extra distance to make that cut. Okay, here is where we started to end up with some of the some of the the, the deeper problems on this. Okay, <clears throat> we've got a parallelogram inside of there. Okay, but look what happens when we start to um, we start to bump into some of the other structures, some of the other sides. Look at the cross section over here on the right side. What kind of a shape is this? It's a pentagon. There's five sides. We actually took a basically a cube, you know, square on all sides, congruent on all sides, parallel on opposite sides, and actually cross-sected it and managed to make it spit out a pentagon which seems almost like it would be something that would be impossible to do. And if you continue to do this kind of uh, kind of thing, okay, you see not only your pentagon changes shape, there's the trapezoid that we were talking about. Okay, different pentagons depending on where the, uh, the cross section occurs at. But as well, the more extreme that we make this thing, and if I can figure out the right combination, here we go. Nope, still not quite. There is another shape waiting for us, if I can find it. There we go.
And you can't, it doesn't all fit inside of the, well, let me see if I can move it. There we go. <clears throat> what kind of a shape do you have now on your cross section? Got a hexagon in there as well. Six sides on the cross section. And I know you can't really see the, the red. It's, it's a more vivid color on the real website. My projector's just not so good. Okay. But there's a hexagon in there as well. And this is actually very similar to a question that showed up on last year's end of course test. They asked a question about a cross section of a rectangular prism. And then they asked how many shapes or how many different sides were possible on the cross section. And one of the answer choices said like three, four, or five sides. One said four, five, or six sides. One of them said three, four, five, or six sides. And the correct answer was three, four, five, or six sides because you can cross sect a cube. Okay, there's your triangle, just chopping off the corner. You can get as few as three sides on your cross section and you can get as many as six sides on your cross section. A lot of people missed it because we didn't have any idea what was going on there. Okay, but anyway, uh, like I say, it's got a lot of different shapes. Okay, and you see here's a pentagonal pyramid. It's kind of hard to see on that uh, on the uh, screen up there because the red doesn't show up really very well. Okay, but uh, you see this bottom slider here. It says lateral faces. You can actually change uh, what the shape of the base is. You got a triangular pyramid rectangular pyramid, pentagonal, hexagonal, heptagonal, octagonal. I mean, you can make the, uh, the uh, figure pretty much have as many sides as you want it to. Okay. So anyway, uh, that's kind of the way this thing works. And again, I said it's this is a difficult thing. Some people are really able to envision this thing in their their mind's eye. Some people have a whole lot more trouble, uh, kind of, uh, kind of coming up with that mental image on these things. And you're just going to have to deal with that. Okay, it's just unfortunately the way the way we've got it here. Okay, now I am I don't have a worksheet here for you. Okay, this this slide was supposed to be different. Actually, what I want you to do is I want you to spend a little bit of time working with this website. And there's actually another one that I have as well. I will put the web addresses on Edmodo for you. Uh, but I want you to spend a little bit of time looking at this website and hopefully the other one as well, playing around with that interactive application. I just want you to get a good hands-on idea of what the different uh, cross sections for different shapes might be. And there's unfortunately not a whole lot I can do to help you on this. Either you're going to get it or you're not. And uh, I, I just want you to have a decent idea of what they are. Hopefully playing around with the website, you'll get a better idea. But that's pretty much what we're going to do on cross-section. So please have a look at that website.